what I'm going to be talking about today is sort of like a culmination of a lot of conversations between people in sort of the Ethereum community and the Falcon community. Um, and we have sort of been working in the intersection of those two, two communities for a long while. Um, uh, but today I'm going to be talking about really how we can scale coordination uh, using some of the tools that are starting to come out of the crypto ecosystem. Um, all right, so one, one thing, if you remember back in 2014, there's this thing going on where people were forking Bitcoin and creating different sorts of blockchains because they wanted to play around with uh, different sort of features. Uh, maybe they wanted to have like a naming system or experiment with some other sort of proof of work for doing something useful um, or sort of experiment with uh, sort of uh, company shares and sort of proto DeFi uh, so you have bit shares. Uh, or just like for, for the walls, like Dogecoin. Um, and then there was this insight by the Ethereum community to create like, hey, we can actually not make a new blockchain for everything because it's very difficult and takes a lot of time. Can we just like make it the whole system programmable? And, and that's sort of like the history of like how Ethereum was born. Uh, and this has brought us a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and we've been able to like sort of uh, do things on chain, do sort of various forms of coordination and collaboration with capital. Uh, but we haven't really been able to like massively scale collaboration, um, like have really big online communities all working together to solve some sort of big issue. Uh, and I think some of the problems with this is that we haven't been really figured out how we can do fair distribution of tokens. Um, we have done some airdrops, but it's sort of like not the best mechanism we figured out yet. Uh, but we have been able to actually have DAOs that have um, sort of accrued large uh, treasuries and have a lot of capital that they can deploy. Uh, but the problem in these DAOs is that we have not a good way to, to sort of distribute them. And we sort of have this bottleneck where we have to vote on consensus on everything or have like sub DAOs, but it's like still inefficient. And every contribution you as like a community member will always be siloed to like one particular DAO uh, because you maybe uh, apply for a grant or something like this. Uh, you also have the problem of like predictability. Uh, if you think about how Bitcoin emerged in the whole sort of crypto industry, there was this sort of Bitcoin block reward and everyone sort of like coordinated about the predictability of like, hey, I know how many Bitcoins is gonna be in the future. And so I can invest in my mining company or my exchange company or, or whatnot. Um, but you don't really have that in, in, in if you're starting a DAO. Um, so what can we do? Well, there is sort of like a new movement of sort of approaches to try to figure out how we can do more sort of larger scale fair distributions. Um, and I think of these as sort of like contribution graphs. So here I have some examples. Uh, SourceCred was like an early one that looked at contributions in GitHub and, and some sort of online forums. Coordinate is like a system where you can uh, attribute uh, sort of a weighted score to all of your sort of um, uh, people you work with in a community. Uh, Govern is sort of like this tool that allows you to say what you contributed and then attest to what other people contributed. And other examples like Praise by Giveth, Snapshot also like does this like graph and, and sort of off-chain data and puts it on-chain. InfoQ is like a GitHub thing. And also like Web2 communities are doing this sort of things. Uh, Just One Giant Lab is doing sort of uh, a community-based peer review system. But all these are sort of like trying to build some particular feature on this contribution graph. Uh, and I think what we're missing is that we can actually do the same sort of move as Ethereum did, but for a programmable contribution graph. Um, and so that's, that's what I'm, I'm gonna be diving deeper into now. Uh, and so I think that the first building blocks for this is something called an impact evaluator. Uh, so I learned about this like, <laughs> like maybe three weeks ago. And it's a really cool concept. It basically allows a community con to, of contributors to have some sort of shared objective, measure that and reward it and do that sort of like in an automatic fashion. And so the sort of basic example of this is the Bitcoin block reward. But you can in theory like run this over any sort of uh, data. I think the contribution graph is like probably the most uh, interesting way to do this over. So you measure the world, you evaluate it, and you distribute some reward. And you can actually, if you do this with like some 
sort of set function, you can have like a, the, the same sort of predictability as you have in, in a Bitcoin block reward. Uh, and so the, this, a few things to think about when we're building this sort of system. One is sort of how we reward uh, people who are uh, using the system. So one could be to sort of distribute a new token and that could be sort of like a, a distribution curve like the Bitcoin. You, you can think of that sort of like as a fair launch. Uh, we could do sort of like the same thing, but with governance shares. So if you're familiar with the Moloch DAO framework, it's basically allows you to have shares in the DAO but not be able to transfer them. Or you could have some sort of treasury that you disperse as well. Uh, so you disperse from a DAO or from a personal treasury or from some, some company. Um, and then the second piece uh, we need to figure out is, is where to store this contribution graph, where to store the data and, and the contributions. And so, um, this is where Ceramic come in, the, the protocol that I've been working on. So it's, it's a decentralized protocol for composable data. Essentially what that means is that it allows developers to create data models and build applications based on these data models. And then anyone can sort of compose and use these data models in their application. And so the data is like open and not locked in. Uh, and there's a few features that make Ceramic really good for like as a base data layer for these impact evaluators. Um, and so the, ma the main thing is that all data on Ceramic is verifiable. And what this means is data is timestamped. It's actually timestamped into the blockchain. So we have like a tamper proof um, timestamp that no one can sort of alter. Uh, all actions taken by users are sort of a hash linked log and they're specific for that user. Um, so you can sort of synchronize the entire data set uh, and uh, it's stored in IPLD. So you can't like modify it uh, without that being noticeable. Um, and the most important aspect is that the data is attributable. So you can see which user uh, made which uh, sort of added which data. So you can see like who did what essentially. Uh, and so this is of course enforced, to, um, enforced by cryptographic uh, public key signatures. Uh, and, and these, these um, attributions are tied to your Ethereum address or your Falcon address or whatever other blockchain address. It's like tied to actually an address that can receive rewards. And of course, if we have this sort of um, data layer that can also be replicated using peer-to-peer using -peer networking. Um, all right, so, so what sort of applications are useful when we're thinking about these impact evaluators? Um, I think, I think any sort of data, any sort of application that you can imagine could actually feed into a mechanism like this. So, so some use like top of mind would be like project management, dealing like planning and stuff like that, uh, doing task tracking, opening and closing issues, uh, maybe have like a personal contribution uh, log or evaluations of contributions is also interesting. I think one thing that we probably want to move to verifiable um, data structures as soon as possible is, is our sort of like DAO governance forums where right now they're run by uh, some guy that just like has a server somewhere and it's sort of like it's run by the community but you know the person who runs the server could probably like change what people are saying and th things like that because all data is not like attributable and, uh, and signed by the people in the community. Uh, another thing that I'm super excited about, and especially if we can make these impact evaluators reward distribution, uh, re reward, pay out rewards to people contributing is knowledge graphs. So basically representing different sorts of knowledge uh, and sort of scientific discourse in, in these sort of like attributable, verifiable data graphs. Um, then another thing that's important if we are to build these impact evaluators is that we need some sort of trust seed. We need some sort of root of trust that uh, we can base the evaluations upon because otherwise we would be um, sort of, um, you could do a civil attack on the system and just create a bunch of, of sort of bogus data that might be hard to distinguish, but programmatically. Uh, so you probably want to start with some, some root trust. Uh, the cool thing though is that um, if you're familiar with like quadratic funding and what Gitcoin is doing, they have this sort of passport thing. And the passport is actually already stored on Ceramic. Uh, so you can potentially pull that in as like an additional civil resistance mechanism here. Um, and so let's start, so, so if you remember the impact evaluator function, uh, it 
first looks at the world. So let's define what the world is. Um, uh, I think it's roughly like this. So we have data apps on ceramic. So it's a set of data models that is imported into the evaluation of the function. And basically the data sets define what the um, sort of rewardable actions are in, in the system. And it's sort of like up to the function to define how to distribute rewards based on like what's in there. We have the trust seed, which is this sort of root of trust in the contribution graph, which I just mentioned. Uh, then we probably want to feed in what happened in the previous round. So we have basically the previous rewards in, in as an input to our function. And this provides us with like a feedback signal that allows us to the system to like sort of understand what's going on. And finally, we probably want to import other sorts, other data sources as well. Uh, and here it's important that it's not just some random data of the internet that we don't can't really verify. We probably more care about like the state of some smart contract of Ethereum or something similar, where uh, we can sort of trustlessly verify that that was actually the data that uh, and the state of the system. Uh, and so the impact evaluator function based on what we just talked about would basically look like this. You have an input, which is uh, uh, a DAG uh, or a list of CIDs of ceramic data. So data in ceramic, as I mentioned, is stored in IPLD. Uh, we have this trust seed, which is basically just a list of accounts. And we have the previous rewards. And the previous rewards is most likely something we want to store as a Merkle tree so we can do so, sort of like Merkle drops on chain, which is sort of just like an efficient way of uh, distributing, doing sort of like airdrops on chain. Uh, and then the, the, the return of this function should probably just like be an updated Merkle tree of rewards and potentially include like an updated list of, of this trust seed that I mentioned. Okay, so cool. Now we have this sort of function, we can evaluate it, but how do we actually bring the results on chain? Well, there's sort of three different approaches, right? So one is an oracle, either we trust someone completely or we have some sort of like semi-trusted uh, tokenomics based um, oracle system. Uh, and of course this is like the least secure uh, approach, but it's sort of like the most easy to get started with approach. And there are sort of cool, ways, cool things. Since data is verifiable in ceramic, if we have some sort of like, um, court system, there's, there's sort of a clear us and there are other like sort of on-chain court system that oracles can like dispute to. Uh, the judges in this court system can actually run the computation for themselves locally and sort of be informed of, of how to uh, sort of uh, what they should vote for in, in this case. Uh, better yet is to have some sort of verification game. So fraud proofs essentially, that's what optimistic rollups use, that's what Truebit use, uh, uses. Uh, the problem with these is that they're very complicated to implement. Um, and so it probably take a lot of effort. I think the most ideal thing is probably to have some sort of uh, trustless proof, like a zero knowledge proof, where um, we can just like compute a proof over this and put the proof on chain. And then we can sort of just like, we don't need to trust that the computation was done correctly. We can, can see it by the proof. However, doing this over sort of large computations and like an arbitrary language is not super straightforward. Um, there are some, some efforts like Lurk and CK Wasm that are, looks promising, but they're probably like um, ways out still. Okay, so what would actually an MVP look like of a system like this? Um, I think we can do it fairly straightforward, uh, sort of make, relying on, uh, well, I'll just go through it. So we have this set of contributors. Uh, they do their contributions, which get written into ceramic. Then we want to compute the, the impact evaluator function. And so essentially uh, a developer has written this function and they sort of deploy it to, to somewhere and uh, they run it over the ceramic data. This could be run in something like Baclayao, which is a, um, it's like a compute over data system that operates on sort of IPFS Filecoin data. The output of the function could be a, a Merkle tree that's compatible with something called Air, uh, AstroDrop, which is essentially a way to have an updatable airdrop um, on Ethereum, on the EVM. And then we wanna put the results on chain. Uh, we can do this to, so a lot of DAOs are already using Gnosis Safe, so it's probably like a, a, a sort of safe bet. Uh, and Gnosis Safe has this reality module which essentially is an oracle that in the end ends up in the Clearos um, sort of on-chain court. Um, once the, this, this root is on-chain, 
uh, the community of contributors, they can choose to claim their rewards whenever they want. So uh, maybe they do a bunch of contributions to claim rewards later or claim them early. But yeah, this is essentially what, what sort of like an MVP could look like. Um, all right, so now that we've seen that, uh, what's actually the next steps here? Well, uh, we're putting together a grant. So uh, Ceramic, together with the Black Layout team, are gonna have a shared grant up very soon. Uh, and the goal of this grant is to build sort of out the MVP of impact evaluators. And once we have this MVP there, um, the hope is that anyone can program any sort of impact evaluator that they like over any sort of contribution graph. And I think one of the first things that um, we want to do is actually build an impact evaluator that evaluates how good or evaluates contributions to the impact evaluator framework itself and impacts how useful the, imp the, the impact evaluator framework is to the rest of the community. So bas basically turning the feedback loop back on itself. Um, so we hope that can actually accelerate a lot of these efforts. Uh, and finally, of course, like uh, people contributing uh, useful data sets to Ceramic in general will not only be useful to impact evaluators, but the ceramic network in general. So that's something that is likely gonna get rewarded as well. Uh, if you're interested in this, please join our chat at uh, Discord. And we have an impact evaluator channel there uh, so you can get involved. Um, yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs> Did we have time for questions? Hi, thank you for the presentation, it was really nice. Um, I'm very curious about what would, if you have any thoughts on um, use cases where this would be easier to implement, because I assume the step of moving from a contribution in the real world to putting data on, 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 on ceramic would be hard for some use, use cases like deforestation or because you need to have some trust on uh, how good this record I'm seeing, or how how truth, um, how truthful it is. Um, so I, I'm wondering if you have like any thoughts on use cases where that is not an issue, and so it's just a piping that needs to be done. Yeah, I think I think that most of the use cases that are actually interesting are sort of these subjective use cases where someone makes a contribution that's basically a claim that like, hey, I did this thing and it's useful for this cause. And then someone else would like evaluate that and like say, yeah, that was really good or that was not so good. And that's sort of like the approach that we have seen in, in some of these like early um, use case specific things where it's based on sort of the contribution graph and it's rooted in a set of initial sort of participants in the community. So they sort of like have uh, the ability to, um, how do you say, like, uh, direct the attention of this community mm. based on what's actually helpful to the community, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you, you sort of have some um, evaluators that say, okay, this is good or this is bad. Yeah, and you can sort of think of the, the sort of emergence of this system as like, there is an initial group that's sort of like evaluating other people's work, but then you can think of it as like this emergent web of trust where uh, if, if the initial group actually uh, sees that a bunch of people's contributions are very, very useful, then these people that initially did a bunch of useful contributions might also be able to evaluate other people's work. So it's not like there's a committee or something like that of evaluators, but it's actually dynamic and grows over time. Thank you. Hey, Joel, super, super interesting. Uh, I'm Andreas. Um, I'm a, a co-founder of Legacy. I'm going to actually talk uh, one after that. Uh, so I'm not going to spill the beans, but one of the things we, we look at is to have essentially a data DAO to govern our system. All right. And what we want to do is not have that driven by how much equity or how many tokens you have in the DAO. We don't want to have it uh, one person vote, right, because there could be millions of people involved and that becomes unmanageable. And so the thinking is to basically uh, give out voting tokens by people who qualify, and the way you qualify is by making meaningful contributions. Right, and I think what, what, what you just explained here would be uh, sort of exactly the, the approach of, of doing that. Um, 
And, and I think the, the biggest challenge I see is, is in step one, right? How, how do you measure, right? And yeah, if you have sort of a semi-formal system, you know, like GitHub or so, you know, then you, know, you, have, a, you have a starting point. But uh, you know, if, if, it's, if it's different kind of contributions, right? Uh, um, I mean, ha well, maybe the question is, you know, ha how, how f have you looked at different types of metrics for different types of contributions uh, at this point in time, or is that still a research question for you? Yeah, so, so, so sort of what I want to achieve and do here is uh, the, the realization is that there is already like a bunch of projects have started exploring the space of, of these different things and different ways of evaluating um, how we distribute rewards. And so the, sort of the goal of this, this effort here is to create a general programmable framework for anyone to start like permissionlessly is like create a new way of evaluating contributions over an existing graph or over a new graph of information. Uh, so, so sort of like what, yeah, what we're trying to achieve here is just make the, the framework and then allow a community of people to just like, hey, I wanna build an evaluator for X and then build that, but have that be within sort of like um, this framework that anyone can plug into, if that makes sense. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so the other question I have is if, you know, uh, one of the dangers I see is, uh, for example, if you have Airbnb, right? I mean, the host is doing a review and uh, the guest is doing a review, right? And, and there seems to be the tendency, you know, you don't see really, you say anything really bad and they don't say anything bad. So it's sort of all one warm, fuzzy, happy family and, and you don't really get to real criticism in that way, so you don't really do a true evaluation. Uh, wouldn't be the danger here too, and how do you would get around that? that? That's something you have been thinking about? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I think, I think the way we sort of get around it is that uh, we can have multiple evaluator functions running over the same data, distributing like two different tokens, right? So you have this Airbnb sort of uh, review system, and then there's like Airbnb one and Airbnb two that like is doing different evaluations. So it's just like competing networks over the same sort of data graph. And so I think, I think that's like how we can have sort of a more balanced view on what's going on. All right, thanks so much. Thank you.